Hey, Forrest, you got any comedy albums coming out? <laughs> oh, thanks for reminding me. Uh, I do. I have um, an album coming out. I haven't had one in a long time. It's called the Bella EP, and it's a, actually just a short set. It's like a 20-something minute set. But it's really good. It's fun. I uh, recorded it late last year, and it's going to be featured on SiriusXM's Raw Dog channel on June 24th at 2 p.m. and 10 p.m. They're going to play the whole album. Uh, that's Channel 99, the Raw Dog channel on SiriusXM. Uh, I'll post a free link for people that don't have SiriusXM. You can click on the link. I'll put it on all my social media. Forrest Shaw is my handle on everything, and you can click that link and listen to SiriusXM for free then. So I just want to give a shout out to Paul uh, of Charsky at Draw Dog. He set this all up. And then my album will be available on all digital pl pl platforms June 26th. So everywhere that they have that you can listen to it. And my website will just be free streaming there too. But please listen to Raw Dog June 24th, 2 p.m. and 10 p.m. Yeah, that's it. And I have a comedy special coming out on Netflix July 7th. It's called Intolerant and it debuts July 7th. And the easy way to remember it is it's three days after my auntie's birthday. Oh, yeah. When is it? July 7th. Oh, when's your aunt's birthday? 4th of July. I don't know any other way for people to remember uh, that, that yeah. date. So. You should just say your aunt's birthday. Yeah. The Human Anatomy. DVD players. The lower intestine of a bull. Did you know that dogs can also be called canines? You could learn all of this on I Don't Know About That with Jim Jeffries. Hi, I'm Jim Jeffries. Welcome to I Don't Know About That. Hello, everyone. How are you all doing today? Kelly, Jack, and Forrest, you all good? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, the, the, the human anatomy? The human anatomy. When uh, you said you had some things picked out for the, the I don't, top, I wasn't expecting any of those. I don't think of the lower intestine of a bull. Yeah, I mean, the not whole, the a whole, amazing. A whole episode on the lower. Not the upper. That's, that's a different episode. <laughs> oh, there's so much to know about Part the two. upper. Well, how does it work? Yeah. Do they shit like we do? Well, because don't they have four stomachs? Fuck off, Jack. Jack. you know you a little too know much. <laughs> Bulls don't have four stomachs. Cows have two, right? Yeah, two. You sure it's not four? No, no. I don't I, know I, if any of them have four stomachs. I learned, I learned that the cows have two stomachs because uh, when David Brent goes for lunch with a woman, he says, ask me about anything. It's basically the concept of this show. <laughs> he goes, ask me about anything. He goes, cows have two stomachs. So he said that. So that's how I know that cows have two stomachs. I don't know the purpose behind the two stomachs. That could be an episode mm -hmm. <laughs> right there. Oh, right. yeah. Don't you have some announcements? of? <laughs> oh, I, I have some announcements. Never gets old. I, I do. I, I, it looks like maybe in July I'll be performing in Vegas at the Mirage Hotel unless it gets good because Vegas is reopening. So, oh, really? okay. yeah, and so I don't really, you, you know, I don't know if Vegas is the place that should reopen. No. I feel like maybe a place where people sit at tables and hand each other money constantly yeah. over and over, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth with chips and everyone's drinking and stuff like that. Eh, probably not the best. Yeah. The last time we went to Vegas, I was effectively dead for nine days. I, I think <laughs> me and you both had, had COVID-19 yeah, when we were in so. Vegas. I think I had it, but but I can't prove that because the tests aren't very good. Yeah. And you get tested now and they go like this. Ah, oh, well, we gave you a test, but you could have had it. You might not have it. You might have it again. Who knows? Yeah. COVID. Yeah. They're like, yeah. give me $125. We'll tell you zero information that you didn't have before you took this test. Did you do the antibody test? Yeah. And I haven't gotten the results yet, but when, they, did you take but it they, a while ago? Uh, last week, but they oh, okay. send you an email going, these tech tests aren't very accurate. So it could mean <laughs> that you had it, could mean that you didn't. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? Well, Sam Morell put out a very good tweet today. My friend Sam Morell, the comedian, he put out a very good tweet. And the tweet was, uh, he said, because uh, some of the COVID tests take 10 days to mm -hmm. get the results out. And he said, 10 days to get your results for COVID. That's like a pregnancy test that takes nine months. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Accurate>. <laughs> right. Like at the end of 10 days, you're almost <laughs> over it or you're dead. Yeah. <laughs> there are your two choices. Did you see the way that I, I can't pull this up on the screen right now, but this that's that what they're saying for blackjack tables, how you would play now. All right. They're so, going to install those. So there's like, so there's, it's like a sneeze guard at Sizzler. Yeah. 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 They're both like, <laughs> like on, you, you have to go inside one of these things and you gamble. And then also the dealer has that in front of them. So you that'll, just like, that'll like, be good. Yeah. That'll be good. Yeah, it'd probably you know, be better. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to talk to people. <laughs> yeah. I love being alone on the blackjack table. Last time I was in the high rollers room, I was betting a hundred dollars a hand on blackjack. And you know, so nothing crazy, you know. And the the woman next to me was betting four or five grand a hand, Jesus. right? 
and, Did you and try losing. to sleep with her? No, but <laughs> no, she's like an old boozy gambler. Like, mm-hmm. and it was all inheritance money. You said you wanted a sugar mama. Right. That no, was no, your no, opportunity. Yeah, yeah. No, but I actually, I actually told her to stop gambling. I said, stop it, please stop this. You can't do this anymore. Please, st- I, I, I couldn't watch it anymore. I had to tell her because it wasn't like she was playing five grand a hand and playing the cards properly. She was playing like a fucking maniac. <laughs> she was, she was getting twenty and split those. <laughs> against like a 10 and it was like what the fuck are you doing and then and then like she was, she was hitting on 17 against the six i'm not fucking kidding you right yeah. and i what was an idiot with, no but with five grand and i'm like you can't stop this yeah. you're just giving this casino money this like this money if you want to throw it away just give it to a charity or something if you want to just literally just throw it at, right. well, and, and I and I said unless I go you'll be in the I go you're gonna be broke unless you have unlimited funds and she goes I do right <laughs> and then now the mystery in my head is how did that woman get unlimited funds <laughs> <laughs> who was the bloke who married her what did she invent how on earth has that lady old Smokey Joe got unlimited funds but and, good luck to you and then when he went back to her room and you were fingering her you found out I didn't. <laughs> I didn't finger uh, her because I don't believe right. in foreplay, Kelly. <laughs> I'm not. I don't have a, a real g- traditional. I don't have a gentle touch. <laughs> right. I get straight in there. So that brings us to our guest. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Good segue. Um, I'm going to introduce our guest today. Say hello to Ted McFall. Good day, Ted McFall. How are you, mate? I'm doing fine. Nice to meet you. All right. Okay, so here's a part of the show, judging a book by its cover. Ted, Jim's going to try and guess what you do. He's only allowed to ask you yes or no questions. He has never gotten this right. He probably will never get it right. But I'm gonna maybe add a couple hints today to see if now, you know, now, so. now, Ted. I'm so look- just ask him yes or no questions. I'm looking at the room you're in right now. You either have the biggest room on earth with a regular size flag, <laughs> <laughs> or or a really small flag in a regular size room. <laughs> So I don't know. I don't know. Like you, oh, you fine. might be two hundred meters at the front of the room, and that's way in the back, and you're just got a warehouse. But I'm not sure. But you look like you got lots of books. No, not books. Uh, boxes and boxes probably filled with. And you look very orderly. I think. Is are you in your garage or is this like a living room or what is this? It's hey, no. It's a it's a barn. It's a barn. You're in a barn. Hey, all yes right. Yes or no? Only. Yeah. I mean, I just feel. Uh, like all right. Yeah. It's supposed to be yes or no, but I mean, he's never gonna get him yes or no. So okay. Yes or no. He's never gonna get him even if he has so. Question okay, one: fair. Are you in a barn? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you're in a barn. That means you live. You don't live in LA or anything like that. You live out in the in the sticks a little bit. Not when I'm in the sticks. I mean, like you live in a rural area. Um, I uh, so you're going to do, does your does your job involve animals? Kind of. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. You. He deals with sexual predators. <laughs> um, okay, so kind of with animals. Uh, are, are you? Uh, do you work at a university? No. Okay. Have you written books? No. Okay. So how are you a specialist in something? <laughs> yeah, I've no never. Worries. I've never. Uh, do you do documentaries? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to have done those things to be an expert in something. But how how do you pass on your information? Well, we'll we'll say. Yeah. Well, if, Jack says cows have four stomachs. They yeah. do. <laughs> yeah, but but no one. No, but no. Oh, okay, he's maybe podcast out his stuff. <laughs> um, uh, have you done a TED talk? No. Okay. I, I will. I will give you one hit right uh, now. That uh, might. You know, in, in the intros, when you make up, you, you say like random things that you want to learn about. Yeah. You've said this before. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're from Cats the Musical. <laughs> <laughs> it's him. <laughs> uh, it's Mr. Ristopolis. Mr. Ristopolis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So we've done enough episodes now where I think you'd have to scour your brain. Yeah, I don't. Brain. I don't. Uh, the cats. Uh, uh, <laughs> for, uh, for, for fishing, both fly <laughs> and boat. No. All right. You're not going to get it. Um, uh, Ted McFall is an expert in bees. Ah, bees! <laughs> you said that in the second episode, I believe. All yeah. right, you I know about bees. I know that bees are very important to the ecosystem of life, and all if right. the bees die, we all fucking die, all right. man. Holding off M Night Shyamalan, we'll uh, we'll get to that. But the uh, <laughs> what a twist! So, t- <laughs> so Tevin Kval is here to talk to us about bees and murder hornets, yeah. as, as well, because they're. I'll tell you how little I know about murder hornets. Yeah. 
That's the first time I've heard of them. <laughs> You've never heard of murder really? hornets? I've never heard of them. Oh, oh, man. They're, they're scary, oh, that's a huge man. Con- like, huge like a scary. thing. It's a right thing. Now. Is that what you call wasps? No. No, no. no we'll get they're to it. murder hornet. They're, they're, they're going to find out. Why hasn't there been one NASCAR driver called the murder hornet? Because they're, they're like new to the yeah, news. Where's, a, where's the wrestler called on. the murder hornet? You're going to learn about <laughs> it. It came like a month ago. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, I haven't watched news for a month. Yeah, yeah. Here you go. Ted McFall bees. I'm going to put it right there, right there, so you know where to... Um, so <laughs> Forrest, Forrest spelled bees with two E. Yeah. <laughs> what an idiot. idiot. <laughs> so, uh, Ted, tell us how you know about bees so that you can prove to Jim that you're an expert on bees. Are those boxes of bees behind you, Ted? Uh, those are empty hives. Yeah. Those are additional, uh, boxes. That's true. Yeah. You should have, you should have recognized that. Yeah. Give us a point. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Ted, introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you come to know about bees and all that stuff. Yeah, so uh, I'm from a, a beekeeping family. My father raised bees uh, ever since I was a little boy. So I've been around it. I was uh, a helper for my uh, for my father. You know, he always jokes that whenever we left to college that uh, he lost all his uh, all his free labor. But uh, he still <laughs> bee keeps. Uh, I bee keep. It's a, it's a family thing. And uh, and yeah, that's what I, I, I love doing. And uh, it's a fascinating, uh, fascinating endeavor. And there's and you're also just currently getting your certificate. I didn't. We didn't even know this was a thing. We talked yesterday. Your certification from the University of Montana and as a master beekeeper, correct? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm currently working on that. I've already been through the uh, the, the lower certifications. There's levels, and oh. uh, yeah, I'm, ho- hopefully, uh, God willing, I'll finish the uh, master certification at the end of the at the end of the uh, the summer. What the, are the, uh, the yeah, and it, the, the classes are actually they're accredited through the uh, University of of Montana. I mean, they're, they're legit classes. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm a I'm a master beta. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. So, Got him. Didn't, didn't, didn't mean to interrupt that one. That's when you need to drop right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's other levels before before master beekeeper. That's what I was saying, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Definitely. Okay. Um, oh, all wait, right. A little fun fact: I'm allergic to bees. No, I, 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 I got, I've only been stung once in my life. I got stung once in my life when I was about seven. I had to be rushed up to the hospital. I swelled up and was all sweaty and all that type of stuff. But I've been told, and I don't know if you know anything about this, Ted, that I, I may no longer be allergic to bees. It may have worked its way out of my system as I've gotten older, but not to test that out. Yeah, yeah. well, don't answer anything yet, Ted. Don't give him any information. This is what he's trying to do, fish for information, <laughs> then you're going to give it to him. We're going to find out what he knows now. Um, also, that's not a fun fact. That's just a fact. It's not fun that you're allergic to bees. Just you know, fact. Did, 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 did you ever see that Michael J. <laughs> Michael J. Fox thing when he was walking down the red carpet in the E News? He talked about it on like Letterman or something like that. And the E News was like, and here we go. Here's Sophia Vicara. Fun fact: she comes from Colombia. And then like all that type of stuff, right? And then like Michael J. Fox and his beautiful wife are walking down the red carpet, and then, and then the little blodge of the thing. Fun fact: he has Parkinson's. <laughs> Definitely not a fun fact. <laughs> All right, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, Ted, Jim's going to tell us everything he thinks he knows about bees. I'm going to prod him along with some questions because, you know, just so you know where to kind of go. All right. And then when he's done with that, um, we're going to grade him on a scale of 1 to 10. You're going to give him a scale on accuracy. And like I told you, you can be harsh if you don't think he, he did well. Just give him, you know, the appropriate score. Kelly's going to grade him on confidence. And um, I'm going to grade Jim on his new haircut. And before so, you go off, let's take a quick break. Hey everyone, whether you're working from home or working on your fitness, you want what you're listening to be to what you're listening to, not what everyone around you is listening to. Everyone needs a great pair of wireless earbuds, but before you go dropping hundreds of dollars on a pair, you need to check out the wireless earbuds at Raycon. You got some Raycons, Forrest? No. You should get some Raycons. <laughs> Raycons, I'll tell you why they're good. They start at about half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds on the market. And they sound just as amazing as the other top audio brands you already know. I was going to say, uh, you didn't let me finish, but I, I was about to buy some. Well, you, you don't can, want me to say no. And then wait till the end. There might be a code. Okay. I don't know. Right. Their newest model and everyday E25 earbuds are the best ones yet. With six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design that gives you a nice noise isolating fit. Raycon's wireless earbuds are so comfortable, perfect for conference calls or for listening to what do we do here? Podcasts? Oh. You can listen to our podcast. You want this in crystal clear sound? Heaven forbid this doesn't sound perfect. Yeah. Unlike your other wireless options, Raycon's are both stylish and discreet. No dangling wires or stems to distract anyone during video calls. The company 
It was co-founded by Ray J. Ray J. We know what he's been up to. And celebrities like Snoop Dogg, Cardi B and Melissa Etheridge are obsessed with Raycons. Pick up a pair and see what all the hype is about. Now's the time to get the latest and greatest from Raycon. Get 15% off. That's why you had to wait, Forrest. Yeah. Get 15% off your order at buyraycon.com slash I don't know. That's B-U-Y-R-A-Y-C-O-N dot com slash I don't know for 15% off your Raycon wireless earbuds. Buds, buyraycon.com slash I don't know. All right, and we're back. We're back, right? <laughs> yeah. We're back? All right, we're back. All right, we're here with Ted McFall. Bees. Um, <laughs> bees, there you go. Uh, we're going to grade you on uh, accuracy, confidence, your new haircut, and you're going to get a scale of 1 to 10, all three of those. If you go 26 through 30 total, you're a queen bee. 20 to 25, unbelievable. Kelly wrote these. Mm -hmm. Nice. 13 through 19, bees knees. Yeah. I think that'd be a lot. 7 through 12, I'm sorry, 13 through 19, worker bee. I don't know, seven through 12, worker B, and then zero through six, you're a dead B. Where, where's I believe? No, I we don't believe. Have that. Well, we don't have that. You can anymore. believe you can be that you're going to do well in these facts. Yeah. All right. If I do um, well, can I get a B? Okay, B so plus. let's start with it. And, and some people have told me that, like, and, and we did this, I think, on the last episode, a little bit better Olympics. I've kind of repeated the questions afterwards so we knew what we were talking about instead of just being all jumbled up. So I will go back and bring up the questions when we're going over them. Um, all right, let's start with this. Uh, where do bees come from? Uh, bees, they, they live in hives. Uh, bees are, uh, come from the, the queen bee. And the queen bee... Like what, what region of the world do most of them originate? Or? Uh, they, they're indigenous around the world, bees, in every, every okay. place. It's one of the few animals we have all across the world. That's how things pollinate from birds and bees and and they probably that's probably how they created birds and so bees fuck each other but <laughs> if i'm led to believe anything that i've seen in sitcoms over the years where they talk about the birds and the bees but bees uh what happens is there's a queen bee she's in charge of everything right it's a very upside down society where the woman's in power and all the men are fluff <laughs> where all the men are fluffing around trying to impress her now, for lack of a better term, they gang bang her. All the different bees. <laughs> Who gangs bang her? All the all the male what bees. What are they called? Be cocky. The male bees. <laughs> just male bees. <laughs> <laughs> they they yeah. be cocky. There's just there's just honey all over the place. Just <laughs> just shot on the. Queen. We can get into the bee porn business. Yeah, really just quick. shot onto the queen bee. So the male bees are just called male bees. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're male bees. And so, <laughs> so just cool solid. dudes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they're a bunch of princes. If she's the queen, prince bees. I'm going to call them. Prince and are there bees. other female bees besides the queen bee? No, just the one. There's no, there's, she, no other, <laughs> there's no other female bees. I don't know. It seems to be okay. So maybe okay. So maybe there's like a queen bee, and she has a few people underneath, and maybe. Don't like, ever say maybe because your confidence score is yeah. going way down. I, I don't know a lot about bees. <laughs> anyway, so 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 there are so all the bees fuck each other, but for the most part. <laughs> If if you if you really want to get involved, if you want to move up the ranks, you become you go after the queen. You give her a good seeing too. She and, and that's why that's why Beyonce calls herself Queen B because she gets banged by a lot of her. <laughs> no, because she's in charge. She's gonna everything. be furious. When she's she has this char episode. She's the number one. She's the boss. That's why she's the Queen B. I think. And also her name starts with a B. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it's more the B that her name starts with. <laughs> okay. Um. And uh, what do bees eat? Um. Pollen. They collect pollen from the different flowers. They eat it too. Yeah, they do everything with it. It's, a, it's a, <laughs> that's that's like their main thing. They eat the pollen. Oh no, they create the honey. No, they they eat honey. They eat honey. Eat honey. Yeah, they create the honey, then eat the honey. Wait, they create it first. They they create it. And how do they create honey? By getting the pollen into the honeycomb and rubbing their feet together. <laughs> it's like wine. I think you're nailing this. You squish all the grapes. Yeah, you hit it with a stick. I'm learning a lot. <laughs> anyway, so the, the bees, the bees, what they do is they all get together and they go, uh, they make the honey. The sugars come out, of, and it, I assume it comes out of their ass somewhere or their feet. The honey. <laughs> and, and they, That's they, a wide <laughs> range. Of yeah. And the and the the honey, they only need like it's not bad for us to take it. See, vegans, this is where our vegans lose me. The, 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 the bees don't mind if we take their honey. I've heard, I know for a fact 
that um, bees only need less than 10% of their honey. They mass produce. And so we take the other honey, and that's the honey that we eat. Okay, how much how much honey does one bee make in its entire life? Oh. Uh, uh, there's a honey bee, of course. There's a honey bee. It makes... Uh, already given that away. It makes, the- it makes a quarter of a jar. <laughs> quarter of a jar. Of yeah. one of those honey bear yeah, containers. Quick, quick, quick. No, no, no. Two, two cups. Two cups of honey. Two cups in its whole life. Yeah, depending on... Here's one for you. <laughs> depending on whether it stung anyone or not. Because after it stings a person, it dies. Okay. <laughs> I knew that, that for is. a fact. Give them what they want. And all, all like, <laughs> like for instance, all honeybees have stingers. Ah, oh, not all of them. Some of them are born without stingers. People aren't all the same either. <laughs> some, <laughs> some, some people are born without limbs. Are they less of a person to you, Forrest? Okay. Are they? If you see someone with flamidomide, do you go, "Oh, that person's not a whole person"? Well, they are to me, Forrest. Okay. They are to me. Um, um, so some of that. some of them are deformed. Uh, how, do, how, how do how do bees communicate? Uh, how do they how do they uh, um, uh, they they, uh, they 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 buzz buzz <laughs> they buzz to each other and that buzz is made by um, rubbing their feet together. Rubbing feet is yeah. The there's buzz. something. There's a lot of foot rubbing in the insect world. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, are they insects? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna write that. Are they insects? Okay. I think they're fish. Okay, but we. I mean, we, he did give you a clue, Ted. He did say sort of when you asked him if he worked with animals, but um, that's that was. Ah, uh, okay. Well, we're all animals. Um, okay. So, so, so anyway, so what are you saying insects aren't animals? Keep they're, li- going. they're living organisms, right? right? Keep going. So anyway, so the bees, uh, we need them in the world because if we don't have them, if they stop pollinating, all the plants will die, and then we won't get anything to eat. And so the, that's how the world will end. It's similar what to what else would happen if what, all the plants die. <laughs> it's similar to what what happened when I was at school. You know how they taught us how dinosaurs became extinct. Now we have the meteorite theory and the ice age and all that type of stuff. But when I was at school, the theory was this: the theory was um, uh, was that uh, the the herbivores ate all the plants. So there was no more plants left, and then the carnivores ate all the all the herbivores, and they just ran out of food. That's what they taught in Australian school. How do they all go? Ran out of food. That's better than creationism, though, <laughs> Stel. Yeah. Ran out of food was okay. the thing. A couple more questions, because it seems like, you know, so I know. Bees, I, I, we don't I, even okay. have to keep talking. Okay. About. We might not even need you, Ted. It just seems like he's crushing uh, Sting <laughs> from the police is not his original name. Okay. Huh? <laughs> his, 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 his original name is Gordon. He was called Sting because he wore a stripy jumper that was black and gold that made him look like a bee. Okay, well. Whoa. Um, bee facts. Uh, how long does a bee live? Uh, and how many live in a hive? Uh, a, bee, a bee will live for uh, three weeks in a hive, depending on the size of the hive. Like if you... Uh, 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 just, what? just give me like a, a range, anywhere from what to what? Anywhere from one, if there's... There's a like, honeybee, I'm sorry, a honeybee, a honeybee colony. Typically honey consists bee. of anywhere from... Blank anywhere, blank. anywhere from one. If there's been like a holocaust, someone sprayed just in there. One bee. <laughs> right, right. There might just be one bee just one kicking bee. about, and then uh, up to uh, eight hundred thousand. Eight hundred thousand. Okay, yeah, that's a big. And range. then last, last yeah. couple of questions here. What is a murder hornet? A murder hornet is uh, it's a ride at uh, it's, <laughs> it's a ride at Six Flags. <laughs> mm. We want to ride the murder hornet. Yeah, yeah, it hurts so my know, neck. Do you know anything about murder hornets? Never heard of a murder and what hornet. And how would a murder hornet relate to a bee? It's a male bee and it fucks the queen. <laughs> okay, I think we're done. Um, I, don't, I don't know anything about bees. Yeah, well, you know. I know, okay, I know, okay, so I know that they sting and they, they, they die. I know that I always have like four of them in my swimming pool that I have to scoop <laughs> out. <laughs> I, like, I know that I always have four of them. In my like, swimming pool. like, why yeah, is we there? We sent the pictures to Ted. I don't. Yeah. See, I don't <laughs> see other other bugs don't get in there, but bees. Fuck me. That's actually, they, it's funny because I was at Scott's this weekend. We were in the pool, and he's like, "What the fuck is with bees? Why do? Why are they always in the water?" Bees I keep trying to save this drown. guy. It's like cicadas and shit, and and, and okay. fucking and daddy long legs and spider. You never see a spider floating around. Fucking bees yeah. can't get enough of swimming pools. <laughs> Love swimming. I keep finding dead bees on my balcony. Yeah. I don't know what to do about that. Okay, yeah, well, well, I'll that's stop not putting them there. I've been trying. Psycho, stop collecting dead bees. I've been trying to send you a message, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, okay, but my, so- my son swims around and he sees a bee. He's like, "Oh, Dad!" 
There's a bee in the pool. The, the bee's very clearly dead. Yeah. It's a very clearly like drowned bee, but like I have to go and scoop it out because my son, oh, no, dad, there's a bee. Well, well, let's see how you did. Okay. Um, Ted, thanks for being patient through this. I could, he was laughing. So that's good. But I think that he was making a lot of notes. So I don't think that's good. Oh, wow. um, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the best, rate Jim's knowledge on bees. Be fair. Be, I mean, be honest. Well, well, since I'm being generous, I would probably give about a two. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's generous. That's two. <laughs> I can't believe you gave him a two. I'm looking at my notes. I didn't know everything about and a lot about bees until we started looking at it. But Two is very generous. You are a nice guy, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kelly, on a scale of one to ten, confidence. Uh, confidence, real low today. Obviously, he <laughs> said, um, "Are bees insects?" So, um, <laughs> and he said, "I know about bees because I always have four in my swimming pool." So I'm going one on confidence. One, yeah, this week. that's that's also generous. <laughs> uh, I am giving you a scale of one to ten on your new haircut. And uh, it's pretty good. Pretty good. I think it's, it's what, a good. What, what get... happened with my haircut was I tried to give myself a quarantine yeah. cut, right at home. I just started clipping into it, and then it just wasn't good. Yeah. It turned out I couldn't do it by myself. Oh. Yeah. Uh, around the back of me, so I had to get Julia come over to to fix it up, and uh, that was that's why my haircut's been improved. But it was shocking when I first. Started. I'm, I'm going to give you a ten on your haircut, but then I'm going to take off five points for bring up sting. So you're going to get five <laughs> total in that category. This, I, this score doesn't really I mean, mean anything. I was, I, I, I was telling but. Jack a story the other day, just before we carry on, about when you just took my points off. Okay, so <laughs> so what happened was when, when I was in school, they, had, they made you learn like a few languages and Australians don't give zero fucks about learning other languages. We're just so isolated. And what are you going to do? They always teach you German, Italian and all this stuff. Like that. And so I think it was a, an Italian test. On, on my Italian test, I got minus four. Wow. <laughs> minus four on an exam. That's fucking remarkable. Um, or because I got one, I got one uh, mark for knowing what Bongiorno meant, right? <laughs> fucking nailed that to the wall, right? <laughs> Knew exactly what that meant. And then I got five marks deducted for talking and annoying people during the exam. Mm, yep. Right? Now here's the kicker. I didn't come last. Tony Abdo annoyed people twice and got minus 10. That cunt didn't even get Bongiorno. Fucking <laughs> Tony. Tony Abdo, if you're out there. Tony Abdo. He was uh, he was, he was like... Uh, Tony's got to be Italian too. Tony, he didn't get Bongiorno. I think Tony might have been Lebanese or something. Uh, Tony was our uh, Nelson Muntz of the school. <laughs> All right, Tony. If you're out there, please subscribe and rate the podcast. Appreciate it. Uh, you're a worker bee. Somehow you made it. We got to fix the scale. I I'm, think, a, I'm a worker you shouldn't, bee. You shouldn't, be, you shouldn't be a dead bee. Zero through six is a dead bee. Ted was generous. If you should have given you a zero, you would be a dead bee. I should have given you a two, but it's okay. We're going to move on. No, my haircut. Right. So Save gonna, me. So we're going to get, we're going to talk to Ted now. Ted, thanks for being patient. Um, make it till you make it. Let's start off with uh, where do bees come from? Uh, that was the first question I asked him. And he yeah, said they're everywhere. from all around the world. Is that correct? No, well, originally they came from around the Asia area, and that was around 140 million years ago, and they evolved at the same time as plants. So it would make sense that the uh, the, the bees pollinate the plants, and so they they evolved uh, so long ago, and uh, and they're still pollinating to this day. So they spread after that, but that's what they're. That's what I was trying to get. Tell, yeah, that. but that means that we're everywhere with plants. Well, we can't just go. I asked oh, you though, where did they come originally? Oh, they that. evolved from the Big Bang with the rest of us. You well, got it. You, you got it too. Be thankful you got it too. Okay. So, and well, then you wouldn't go. Where did people evolve from? But the Jim asked, are they insects? Let's let's get ask that question. Yes, that, that that is correct. They are insects. Yeah. Mm, what a good question. <laughs> 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 Do insects have hearts? <laughs> I don't know. They would. They would have. They have some. I know when you step on them, some type of ooze comes out of them. They have. <laughs> they, they have some type of bloodstream that comes out of them. So I would say they're an animal. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's 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 not blood. It's a different type of a uh, uh, hemolymph. A different type of a. Uh, a, a liquid that's inside them. Well, they're it, in, it's not blood. They're in the animal kingdom. Yeah. So I guess you'd be right on that. Yes. That. So. Uh, but anyways. Um. So the queen bee. Uh. Jim says that they're in charge of everything and they just have sex with male bees and there are no other female bees. Can we talk about the queen bee and like what other kind of bees there are? And and I, I, maybe before yes. we do that, how many different types of bees are there? Because I know we're going to talk about honeybees specifically today a lot, but like how many types of bees are there? I know there's an African bee. There was a problem with them. <laughs> I don't mean <laughs> No, no, we didn't have enough of them coming. Okay. Oh, no, there was, we, we, were, we did on the show, the African bees were coming and they were causing trouble. I, 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 I got to stop talking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so the, Afri the, the Africanized bee, that's a, that's a type of a honeybee actually. But there's, uh, there's thousands of different types 
of bees. But uh, when we're talking about the honeybee, that's the one that grows uh, big colonies and can uh, uh, pollinate huge amounts of crops and, and plants. And, uh, and so that's the one that, that gets everyone's attention is the honeybee because that's the, that's the, big, the big powerful one. But there's, there's thousands of types of uh, smaller, like little uh, native uh, sort of bees also. Okay, so the queen bee, and there's no other female bees. That's what Jim said. Is that correct? Correct. No, no. All, the majority <laughs> of the bees are females. So if you see one flying around, almost all of them are females. Uh, there are a few drones. Uh, those are the males. They're a little bit bigger than the females. But they don't mate with the, the queen that's in the hive. Uh, the, the queen will mate one time after she hatches. She will leave the colony, fly miles and miles away to make sure that she doesn't accidentally mate with any of her uh, siblings. Uh, drone, drones that she's related to and so she mates one time and then that's it for the life and then she flies back to her hive and she lives the rest of her life in the hive and never leaves how do they how, like how my life can, can, <laughs> Ted, can you look at a hive and just automatically spot who the queen is do you know who it is right away yeah yeah she'll she'll be a little bit bigger she'll have a longer abdomen um uh, and a, a little flatter uh thorax she, she's she's easy to recognize and how do they how do they nice annoy crowns. how do they decide who the queen's going to be is it just like like someone rises through the ranks, eats a bit more, gets a larger thorax, and then that's the job. Or there's like are you born into it, like the Dalai Lama. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're they. Uh, what they'll do is they'll take a young little larva that would have just been a regular worker, and they will treat it differently and feed what's called royal jelly to that uh, young one. Mm. And and they just keep feeding royal jelly and pack it full of royal jelly, and then she grows big, strong, and she turns into a queen. And that that royal jelly is actually a very strange uh, substance. The, the bees actually squeeze it out of their head. I hear it's good for your skin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Some, some people eat it. I mean, it's uh, it's kind of a, uh, it's supposed to be super healthy. I know what I'm renaming something. <laughs> uh, so wait, the males, only only drones are males, and then the females are the worker bees? Is that how it works? Yeah, that's correct. The, the, the drones are the males, and they can't sting. They have no stinger. Really? They don't do any work. They, they, yeah, they don't do any work. All they do is lounge around in the in the hive all day and eat honey. So they it's the opposite work. to our society. Yeah. <laughs> Canceled. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but you know, the, the bad thing for the drones is uh, come the wintertime, the girls kick all the, the drones out. They kick out all the boys and don't let them in. And so the boys uh, end up uh, freezing to death or starving to death outside the hive. Uh, so it's uh, that happens once a year in in big society, where that happens once a month in the human world. <laughs> <laughs> Except it's a couch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the couch is outside. All right. Um, uh, Jim said Beyonce. I think we know that's not right. Uh, well, I think that's why she's called Queen Bee because she's in charge, right? And it, it, yeah, I guess. And it's right. a happy coincidence I that her name is right. Beyonce. But Jim also said they move up the ranks by giving the Queen Bee a good sing to. Uh, do bees <laughs> fuck? Do they have sex, like Jim's saying, or is that? Uh, yeah. So, so whenever the Queen first hatches, she flies away and she finds what's called a drone congregation area. Which are there's like a lot of drones that are flying up in the air. Yeah. So actually, that fellow that fellow that said he found uh, dead bees on the uh, on his uh, balcony. There's yeah. a chance that somewhere up in the air above his house is a drone congregation area. Because what happens is after the male um, mates with the female, he'll fall dead. <laughs> there's a drone congregation area inside his house. He lives. <laughs> <laughs> It, how embarrassing is it that bees are fucking more than you are? It's, your really, own it's, really, upsetting. it's really upsetting. I've had people make yeah. out in my bathroom who yeah. aren't me. Yeah. I know there's bees having sex in right, right, my right, house. Right, right, God right. damn it. Right. Being I'm taunted. cursed. <laughs> wait, wait. Let's These go. These are mocking you. Every, uh, I'm sorry, Ted. Let's go back a step. Here. <laughs> You've had people make out in your bathroom who aren't you. Yeah. Why? What they? they used mean, to, is it like an ensuite, like in your bedroom? Bathroom? Yeah, in my yeah. bedroom. Yeah, what's we, going on there? We had a party and just I kept opening the bathroom to people making. I was like, what, what are you doing? I gotta go. Get your out. life is like a bad age. Yeah, yeah, why? Really why? Is. Why wouldn't they just do it out in the living room? I don't know. What the, are people? That sound. That's how much people like you, Jack. As soon as people have any sexual tension, where they're like, we might fuck. Don't do it in front of Jack. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to make him feel yeah. bad it's, in his it's, own room. It's not fair. Um, so they go into your room and they make out. Yep. And were they fucking Jack? Were they fucking? No, they didn't go that far. Well, to be fair, they were going to go on the balcony, but they didn't want to disrupt the bees. <laughs> the so. bees, there was a big congregation out there. <laughs> uh, why would they be in a swimming pool? Since we were talking about the balcony, is that a thing? Like people seem to think. Yeah, that, but, yeah, yeah. So actually, that's that's evidence that uh, people might be uh, urinating in that uh, in that swimming pool. The bees <laughs> love it. <laughs> 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 Just fucking told on himself. <laughs> There's like a hundred dead bees. 
That's, uh, <laughs> I, have a, I, have a, I have a small son. <laughs> but I urinate on it. <laughs> wait, so, wait, so they're, they're attracted to urine? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, I mean, they're attracted to to water sources anyway, so it's possible they could just be going for it. But uh, yeah, they uh, they love. Uh, yeah, they particularly love uh, uh, pools that are uh, peed in. So like, you know, kids that, sorry, sorry, I sort of found uh, ten in my underwear. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, All right. I didn't think there was an actual be an actual answer to that. Uh, that was just gonna be like, oh, they're in pools. Love that. Okay. <laughs> Chlorine would kill that though. They got the my pool. Well, they kill the bees. My pool <laughs> guy said that that was all right. You could do anything in there. The chlorine will. Well, that's the thing. How, so bees, their 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 sense of smell is very. I mean, is amazing, right? That's the thing. Oh yeah, yeah, f- yeah. Far far more powerful than, than even dogs. Yeah. So wow. yeah. So you can't smell it, but a bee can smell it. You know, like they... I didn't even know they had noses. <laughs> <laughs> is it true yeah. they can smell fear and stuff like that? Like the pheromones we give off when we're afraid. Is that true? Is that uh, I, I wouldn't say necessarily uh, uh, fear, but uh, of course they could, people smell differently, and so sometimes uh, they will target one person more than another person. Yeah, and you you mentioned in the call there's a that, that smell that is it the smell they generate the banana smell because I said we oh, needed yeah. to mention that that's yeah. So what can you speak to? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So so, uh, so when the bees feel like there's an emergency, they'll emit a, a pheromone, and that pheromone uh, commonly smells like uh, bananas. Some people say it smells like a sweet banana or a banana taffy. So if uh, you know if the bees are all over you, getting you know, attacking you, there's a good chance that you're gonna smell like a, you're gonna think you have a banana smell, and so that's why they say if you're gonna mess with bees, <laughs> don't eat a banana right before you work on your bees because they're gonna think that uh, there's an emergency going on and they're gonna try to sting you. That's a catchy saying. <laughs> <laughs> don't eat a banana before you work with the bees <laughs> because they'll smell it and then they'll go after you. <laughs> yeah, you know, like they say. <laughs> yeah, what my mother always said. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even know before you work with the bees. Because uh, that, that Jim, I think I told you, Uncle Jim famously he talked about. It in the, I think it was the last podcast. Yeah, I, he I, hates bananas. I hate bananas, yeah. and I'm allergic to bees. It's all coming yeah. together. So that's I'm, another good reason not to eat bananas. And playing. you pee in your pool. And, <laughs> yeah. There's little changes I could make to my life that would make it so much better. Stop pissing in the pool. Yeah, I, I, I was I was going to mention Jim that. Uh, uh, every eight or nine years, the, the body's chemistry tends to change a little bit. So there's a good chance you might not be allergic anymore. Or sometimes if someone is allergic, uh, you, you know, or vice versa, they, you can turn allergic or, or become not allergic. Every eight or nine years. That makes sense. I used to be called Susan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can get, I just got an allergy test. You can just get, just get an allergy test. Uh, I, don't, I like, I like the mystery a lot. Well, you're peeing in your pool. You're going to have bees around. You might as well get the test. I, I, there's a lot of people who use that pool. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, uh, so Jim said that bees eat pollen, they collect pollen, and then they, they make honey with it by coming out of their feet or their ass. Yeah, how, how, and then, they, how eat, then they eat the honey. And they eat the honey after that. So look, can we talk about pollen and what they do with them and then maybe get into the honey production and stuff like that? So. Yeah, yeah. So, so what happens is they, uh, they pollinate plants and they're looking for either uh, nectar or pollen. That's the two things they collect and that's the two things they eat. The pollen is a protein. The nectar is the uh, carbohydrate they need. Uh, and so what they do is um, whenever they're collecting pollen, they, they will go uh, – whenever they leave the hive, let's say they find an apple tree. What they're interested in doing is uh, just finding pollen off of apple trees. And so they will like go from a male apple tree to a female apple tree and accidentally fertilize uh, the, the female one. And they'll, they'll go back and forth amongst the, uh, the, that type of uh, plant, whatever they're after, and uh, pollinate the plants. So you know, plants, they have uh, – you know, like the male part of a plant is the anther. And the female part is the, the stigma. And so the bee will uh, accidentally pollinate the plant by making some of that pollen go into the uh, the, the anther of a plant. And do they eat the pollen? That, they don't eat the pollen, right? Yeah, or, yeah, or, yeah. Or they, they, they bring yeah. it back. Yeah, okay. they bring it back okay. and, they, and they'll store it in the uh, in the honeycomb That's and they'll feed it to point. the babies and, yeah. and, they'll, and they'll eat it later. And then so, and so and really it. And the honey, yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go, but the honey, that's it. How is that created? Like it's out of their feet? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, like in uh, plants, have uh, pollen and they also have nectar. So what they what they will do is they will uh, uh, suck up some of the nectar from the plants. And they'll bring it back to the hive, and uh, and then what they do is they uh, there's a they have a stomach for that nectar. They, they, we call it the honey crop, and mm. then they will vomit up the uh, mm. the nectar to another bee, and another bee will take it and uh, mix enzymes with it, and then pass it to another bee. And so I mean, that's called a trophallaxis. So 
So they basically uh, have to add enzymes and spit it to another bee, and they pass that around, uh, you know, 10, 12 times. Is that the and plot the of final, Two Girls, and, One Cup? And, and, <laughs> and they're referred to STBs. <laughs> Wait, so that's how honey's made. It's bee vomit, basically. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, it is, it is, and it's super, it's super clean, it's super healthy. They add these enzymes, and then when they put it in a uh, cell, they have to fan it to dehydrate it. And when it's dehydrated, that's when they can finally cap it, and it's finished. Oh, so they uh, fan it too? Now, 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 be, be yeah. honest, be honest with me, Ted. I, I date a vegan. I've recently given up pork myself because I a couple of days in, but I um, but because I, 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 you know, pigs are very smart animals, and they're treated very badly, and in um, farms and all that sort of stuff. Is there, is there any harm done to a bee when you farm a bee? Is it cruel in any way to bee farm? Uh, no, actually, it's cruel to not uh, take care of bees. Uh, the, the problem is there's uh, things called uh, the varroa mite and other uh, viruses and illnesses that will wipe out and, uh, and kill uh, entire colonies of, of feral bees. That's why, you know, you really don't just walk in the woods and see feral bees anymore because... There's too many viruses and, and problems with them. Um, and so a beekeeper can take care of them and treat their illnesses and, and keep them strong and healthy. So the best thing for a bee is uh, winding up in a beekeeper's uh, apiary. Are you married, Ted? I am. Okay. Before you were married, did you find being a beekeeper got you stacks of pussy? <laughs> <laughs> Like, is there, is there like, uh, like, you know, like farmers only, those dating pages is like, like, <laughs> Will you be mine? Yeah. The app or something? Is there is there a thing like? Will you be mine? Is what it's Bumble. called. Is there is there a community? <laughs> I mean, we have Bumble. Is, what I mean is, is there a <laughs> is there a community of bee people? Do you go to bee conventions and then you're like, oh, there's Susie. She takes care of bees. Good. Yeah. No. Unfortunately, there's there's not that uh, there's not enough beekeepers. There's not enough of us. And uh, and so yeah, the whole social distancing thing right now is uh, it's pretty common for beekeepers. Yeah. Yeah. You already have the outfit ready to go, don't you? <laughs> you like when they brought in quarantine, you went like, oh, if only I had the clothes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so okay, how much honey this we uh, can a bee make in its lifetime? Jim said two cups, and then he said. Oh, quarter of a jar, whatever that it's is. It's a big jar like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's one of those jars that you put a whole lot of Smarties in or M&Ms and then people have to guess how many there so, are in there and okay. then they win the jar. Oh, that's okay. a, big a jar. quarter of a big jar or... It's three, <laughs> three cups. Two, three, cu two, two, three cups. A quarter of a big jar or three cups. I'll go three cups. Three cups of honey yeah. from, per bee. Ted? No, the, the, the lifetime of work for a honeybee is actually only one twelfth of a teaspoon. Whoa! Jeez, oh, they're useless, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't mind killing those things at all. <laughs> no, we don't you like honey. That's yeah, until they want it. Okay, so, so the honey. Okay, so I have had creamed honey. Why? Like, because because people like honey in the same way that people like wine or different oils or whatever. I love honey. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I love honey. And then I always used to buy honey from the side of the road because this is a special honey from this district. Why do different honeys from different areas taste different? Is it the bees or is it something that you do to it? it it's the nectar source. So different areas, bees are collecting different uh, types of, of nectar. And that's why it's a good idea to try to uh, eat honey that's from your area because you're getting pollen and you're, you're getting some health benefits from eating the, the honey that is from that area. Oh, oh so if you had allergies to certain pollens, maybe if you ate honey from your area, that might help. I'm not saying it would, but that's Whoa. my my honey comes from Compton. Oh, <laughs> does it? No. Okay, it could be. I don't, it's a big I don't know. I, I buy whatever well, mass produced. Like, Australia has very good honey. Well, New Zealand has the Manuka honey, and they say that that when you're there, and that, that's like a thing that's been marketed as like this is the most has the most health benefits. But I'm not sure if that's accurate. Is, like, is creamed honey different? Uh, cream honey is, is not different. Cream honey is just regular honey that's been crystallized into super small, fine crystals, and it makes it a, a creamy texture. Right. But it's just regular, pure honey. And for Forrest's question, is manuka honey? What's all that about? Uh, that's <laughs> I don't I don't want to make the manuka people angry, but I mean a lot oh, of it is just. Oh, sounds uh, good, race, doesn't it? <laughs> this fucking manuka came over. <laughs> I thought it was a plant. <laughs> oh, we're having a wonderful party, and then the fucking manukas showed up. <laughs> well, no, even yeah. No, no, it, it, it's, I mean, a lot of that is just like a, a sales play. I mean, I don't want to make people stop eating Manuka honey because honey does have a lot of health benefits and stuff. Um, I, well, I should say uh, raw, 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 unfiltered, uh, unprocessed honey. If you buy just a regular uh, jar from, from a store, 
a lot of times that's already been boiled and it's been filtered through through paper and so all the enzymes are dead there's no more pollen in it you're not reaping a lot of the uh, health oh benefits. really i thought all honey was just in its natural state so so okay so rule of thumb probably don't buy honey that's in a jar that's shaped like a bear yeah, <laughs> yeah. That would be well, the... unless, unless it's from a beekeeper. Like if it's a local beekeeper, like I sell honey that are that's in bears or jars and stuff like that. Oh. But it has I'm to be like from a local guy. So in LA, I mean, I don't know. We could say, it, but in LA, do you know do you know beekeepers in LA? Like where you'd buy it? Whole no, foods, well, I mean, whole foods would have anytime you see a guy on the side of the road, that's probably it's probably the, the raw stuff, you know, oh, okay. farmers markets, farmers markets, and stuff farmers like that. Too. Markets, Sometimes yeah. you get that honey that's like really like a dark brown. What's that stuff? It's like. Uh, really... well, yeah, yeah, it just depends on the uh, on the nectar source. Uh, some some plants give off a very light colored honey. Some are, are a darker honey. It seems like most people prefer to buy the lighter stuff, even though oftentimes the darker stuff might have more uh, 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 antioxidants. Uh, a lot of times the darker stuff might be a little bit more healthy, but uh, it's it's all good for you. Is golden syrup related to honey? No, no that's not. No. That's just shit, isn't it? No. Okay, I love um, that stuff. Jim said that they communicate by rubbing their feet together. To make a noise. And by buzzing, and they do that by rubbing their feet together. How accurate is that? No, no, no. so that buzzing is from their wings. They flap their wings real fast. Yeah. I think I've ever heard that and, one. I thought you were Yeah, and actually, <laughs> uh, sometimes like if a bee flies into a, a lady's hair, you, you know, you hear the bee go, uh, you know, buzzing real, real hard. And so they think that the bee's attacking them, but actually the bee's trying to fly away. And so they hear him, like, sounds like it's very angry, but it's really just, putting its wings in, in overdrive trying to escape do they so more they could, often fly into women's hair if the woman has a beehive hairstyle <laughs> uh, if, if there's a lot of hairspray yes they, ah. uh, yes, hairspray. okay so that's that's my next question how do you avoid getting stung because everyone this is the thing everybody fears bees because they're going to get stung so number one if they if they do sting you they die is that correct and number two how do you avoid getting stung and, and why do we think don't eat a banana yeah <laughs> Yeah, so so bees have a a barbed uh, stinger, so they the uh, stinger gets ripped out and and they uh, and they do die. Um, there's. Uh, do they enjoy uh, the stinging? Is it like if I like ejaculated and then went, oh, that was good, and then I just die? <laughs> no, like, no like, actually, they, they they try their best to make sure that they don't sting. I mean, th so they're very different than uh, like yellow jackets or or other types of wasps because those will will sting. Uh, a lot quicker than a bee will. Bees try not to sting. And unfortunately, people get stung by a yellow jacket or some other type of wasp, and, and they consider everything to be a bee. They'll say, oh, no, a bee, a bee stung me. But really, it's one of those uh, one of those jerk uh, yellow jackets. It's, it's not a bee. Fucking yellow jackets. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking turncoats. <laughs> do they serve any purpose wasps in those guys? Because I hate them. Yeah, they, they do, un take. unfortunately. I mean, they fight bees, and, and they, they try to... Uh, bees and yellow jackets sometimes get in these little wars. Uh, but the... The, the sorry, what, what's, will... what's a yellow jacket? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I, I, I lost. I'm yeah, lost now. Yeah, it, it, it's another stripey, just a stripey like a uh, wasp. Um, oh, but it's not a bee. No, it's kind of like the it, same it, size. It has similar as a bee. colors, so it's like sometimes people think there would be. That's what Ted was saying. Yeah. Okay, just off point for a second. Too many insects. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the world. Too many insects. We don't need them all. What do you need? Well, this is, this is the thing with fucking insects. When I was a kid, <laughs> right, there was cockroaches. Right, cockroaches all over Sydney. They're still here. Yeah, but in Sydney we got yeah. tons of them. That's okay. like a real problem in Sydney. Something to do with the water or whatever, or the land or whatever. Like, and and so you'd open the kitchen door and they'd all scatter away in the middle of the night. And that was just standard. You'd find them in fucking crockery and all. So they're all over the place in Sydney. Anyway, then then I I went back recently and I saw one of them it just started flying. And I was like, when the fuck did they start flying? <laughs> it's like they picked up a new skill. How, how, how many times a year do you look at a bug and you go, that's a new one? I've yeah, lived, well, I've lived yeah, on this planet for 43 years and then every now and again I go, that's, that's like a lady beetle that has longer legs. <laughs> <laughs> when did that one come along? And then you go, those can't fly. Oh, that one can. Too many bugs. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Too many of them. Well, they serve a purpose. You could come to my house as a bug exterminator and go, oh, you got too many ratchet flies. And I go, oh, fuck, better get rid of those. I don't know what a ratchet fly is. Yeah, did you just make that up? Just made it up. Oh, yeah, okay. But you know what <laughs> I mean? Like I said it, and you went, oh, fuck, well, maybe I was I sure a ratchet maybe. fly wasn't, but, but um, we're going to take a quick break real quick, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to talk about murder hornets with Ted McFall. Hey, what are you wearing? What are you wearing? I bet you it's shit. 
because it's not Mac Weldon. Mac Weldon is better than whatever you're wearing right now. Mac Weldon is a premier men's essential brand that delivers in smart design and premium fabrics. Mac Weldon does indeed offer industry-leading underwear, but there's so much more. They're not just an underwear copy company. They're really a one-stop shop for men's basics of all kinds. Ask me what they got first. Ask me what they got. What they got? I tell you what oh, they okay. got. You got your socks. You got your shirts. You got your hoodies. You got your underwear and the new adjustable Storm Chaser raincoat. Ooh. Jacket. Jacket. Different. Rain jacket and coat. It's the same thing. Mm, Re- they're really the longest-lasting, highest-quality items on the market. Mac Weldon believes in smart design, premium facts, and simple shopping. Now, have you bought any products from there for us? I have. What'd yeah. you buy? I bought some underwear, and it's actually being shipped to me now. I don't got it. I literally just got it. I've already got the underwear. It's yeah. the most comfortable underwear it's you'll ever wear. Right it's the most comfortable underwear, socks, shirts, undershirts, hoodies, and sweatpants, and more that you will ever wear. They have a line of silver underwear, which I love, and shirts that are naturally antimicrobial, which means they eliminate odour. They want you to be comfortable. So if you don't like your first pair of underwear, if you try them on and they go, these aren't for me, which I doubt will happen, you know what you can do? You can keep them. We don't want them back. Keep it and they'll send you a refund. So now you've got underwear and you've got money in your pocket, no questions asked. Uh, sweat Not pants, only sweatpants. And Forrest got some sweatpants. Yeah, yeah. Not only does Mac Weldon's underwear, socks and shirts look good, they perform well too. It's good for, oh, you can use it for working out, I've been told. Uh, going to work, going out on dates. So it's just, just everyday life. Mac Weldon really does value its loyal customers. That's why they've created the Weldon Blue Loyalty Program. Here's how it works. Your create account, it's totally free. Don't worry about it. Level one, place an order of any amount, and the next day, never pay for shipping again. Once the purchase of $200 of products from MacWell, and not only we continue to receive free shipping, but you'll also start receiving 20% off every order you make in the next year. Also grants you access to new products that have not been released yet. Plus, they'll send you a few extra gifts added to future uh, orders. I got a scarf too. For 20% off your first order, visit MacWeldon.com and in a promo code, I don't know. That's I-D-O-N-T-K-N-O-W. Thanks, Mac. All right, this episode is sponsored by Blue Tube. Let's talk about fucking. You like fucking, Forrest? Yeah. You like it? Hey, yeah. hey. You know but sometimes, it. You know it. Sometimes harder to get an erection, isn't it? Sometimes I mean, it's harder. Sometimes it's easier, depending on the person you're with. But now you can increase your performance and get that extra confidence in bed. Listen up. Bluechew.com. That's blue, like the color blue, and chew like chew. Blue Chew brings you the first chewable pill with the same FDA-approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. Now, it can be taken any time, day or night. Best to do it while you're awake, get the benefits. Or on an empty stomach, on a full stomach, they're they're chewable and they work twice as fast as a pill because you chew them. The the body absorbs them a lot better. But you can do it right before you go to bed. Yeah, yeah, wake up up in the morning and give someone a good rogering. So you can be ready whenever the opportunity arises. If you could benefit from more confidence where it counts, Blue Chew is the fast and easy way to enhance your performance. Blue Chew is prescribed online by licensed physicians, so you don't have to go to the doctor's office or wait in line at a pharmacy, and it ships right to your door in a discreet package. They tried these other packages that looked like erect penises, and people didn't like it, so they made the shift to discreet. Another Mm. innovation by Blue Chew. Yeah. They're it mainly you. Pack, it was an erect penis. It was an erect penis, and it said this guy's having problems with stiffies it on wasn't the packet. Made out of. It wasn't like it was just cardboard. Yeah. Not silly for us. I'd like one of those. Actually, they're made in the U.S. and since Blue Chew prepares and ships direct, they're cheaper than a pharmacy. And best of all, there's no more awkwardness. Right now, we've got a special deal for our listeners. Visit BlueChew.com and get your first order free when you use the special promo code Jim. Just pay $5 shipping. That's all you got to do. Pay the $5 shipping, it'll come to your door. And that's blue, B-L-U-E-C-H-E-W.com, promo code Jim to try for free. Blue Chew is the better, cheaper, faster choice. And we thank them for sponsoring this podcast. When we're back. Can you eat bees? What a good question, Forrest, that you asked in the break. <laughs> well, I also wanted to find out that, uh, how you avoid getting stung. We didn't talk about that. Just so people can avoid that because people don't want that. Is there ways to do that? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, most of the time you're not going to get stung unless you're uh, messing with the hive. 
or you happen to step on one. I mean, they'll, they'll only uh, they'll only sting you if they feel like they're they're being attacked. Okay, so, so what about clothing or anything like that? Does that? Yeah, yeah. Be, bees prefer uh, lighter clothing. So if I'm wearing like all black and I'm going into a beehive, they're gonna uh, mistake me for a bear, or instinctually they're gonna consider me a bear because that's that's like the enemy of, of bees is a. Uh, what is a it? With, a hairy what gay it, man. What, <laughs> what is it with bears and bees? Like, 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 is bears that just like honey? No, but is that like uh, the main bit of their diet is honey, or is that like them having fucking you know Dessert. some whoppers at the <laughs> movies? You know what I mean? Like, are they like going, oh yeah, a bit of a treat over here, or is that like a staple they have to have? Yeah, well, well, there's not enough bees for it to be a staple, but bears love honey and they love the the larva, the young. Uh, the young juicy uh, larva uh, inside the hive. So they just so eat the whole comb, a- the whole honeycomb. They'll just eat it. I love honeycomb. Have you ever had a violet crumble? It's an Australian dessert where there's two of them. There's the crunchy, which is sort of a synthetic like honeycomb, and then the violet crumble is just standard honeycomb covered in chocolate, and it's a delicious mm. treat. That's like in its raw form, made by I want to say that one's from Nestle. And the you know, I've gone off. But anyway, <laughs> I love to eat honeycomb. Now, when you have honeycomb in a thing, what is honeycomb? Is that just like a dead hive? Is that, so, does that make sense? Like a dried out hive? Is that what honeycomb is? No, no. They have to make the honeycomb so they have a place to store uh, pollen, store honey. And also that's where they uh, lay brood. Now, it's kind of interesting the way that they make uh, honeycomb. They get the wax from uh, from squeezing it out of glands on their stomach. Mm, 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 mm. I had a cyst once. <laughs> that should have made very, something with it, yeah. Yeah, I could have made some gym comb. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so let's talk about murder hornets. Jim knows nothing about murder hornets. Um, uh, probably because he doesn't go on social media that much, which is a good thing. But uh, it, murder hornets, what, I guess they started earlier this year. It became a big thing, murder hornets. I remember just hearing about murder hornets. And it's if you can talk a little bit about what a murder hornet is. Yeah, so last year, right across the border here, I'm, I'm here uh, in Washington State, the Pacific Northwest, right across from Canada. We can found a couple. Drinking, so sorry. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 No, they found a couple uh, Asian giant hornet nests uh, on the other side uh, in Canada here, and then they also discovered an Asian giant hornet uh, close by uh, here on U.S. soil uh, this past December. And in November, I had one of my hives that was uh, totally slaughtered. Uh, in an inexplicable way until we figured out that the Asian giant hornets were present here. And so sure. basically the Asian giant hornets, they showed up to one of my bee colonies and they decapitated all my bees, thousands what? of bees. What? Yeah. They decapitated them? The giant, yeah, yeah, they, a- the giant yeah, they Asian a- ones. Yeah, they're, they're also called murder hornets is the name that we've given, but they're giant Everything Asian. in the a, bee world picture. is upside show down. The <laughs> women right. are in charge. The Asians are giants. <laughs> It's just yeah. it's it's the opposite world, bees. That's that's how big a murder hornet is right there. So, oh yeah, yeah, they're, they're no they're good. Huge. Murder yeah. hornets, no. Yeah, they're and they, big. And they flew over from Asia. How? Okay, so tell me more about murder hornets. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, they they're not sure exactly how they got here. They were either uh, they either came here like on a cargo ship, uh, on, on accident, or possibly someone uh, smuggled them here because uh, in parts of Asia. Uh, there's there's some areas that uh, people like to try to eat them. There, there's different uh, recipes and stuff for the for the the uh, Asian yeah. giant hornet since they're such a big meaty creature. I like uh, there's a TV show where where people try to get into the Australian Australian customs. You have seen that one? Uh uh-uh. uh There's people try to get through customs in Australia and them going through bags because Australia has a very delicate ecosystem. So we've had the cane toad all right. and all these things that have fucked up the ecosystem. So we're very particular about animals and and different foods that can be brought in. And I tell you what, the the Asians they uh oh they try to get a few foods through. <laughs> there's always like there's like uh, we found a snake in your bag, um, <laughs> and that's not indigenous to Australia. And we were wondering why you had that snake. And the Asian bloke's always like this, oh, what the snake you say? <laughs> <laughs> like, I reckon they were smuggled in. I reckon they were smuggled in because, you know, look, they, the wet markets, they like eating everything. 
Yeah. I, that's not a bad thing to say, is no. it? There's a lot of weird things being eaten. It's fine. Right. There's a picture of all your bees that were decapitated, too. That's terrible. All right, let's see this. The wow, kill, it just looks kill. like a bunch of dead bees. There's a lot of, they lost their heads. It's yeah. a whole lot of dead bees. So do they do that for any reason, or are they just dickheads, murder hornets? Like, what uh, yeah, no, they, they, what they do is uh, they'll, they'll, uh, they'll spit on a, uh, on a hive, and then that, that'll uh, alert spit? their... Uh, their... Disrespectful? <laughs> <laughs> spit on it? He yeah. spits on me. Yeah. And then, the, and that alerts uh, their uh, the other Asian giant hornets on what uh, what. <laughs> when the they when is. they when they spit on the hive, do some of the more adventurous bees get off on it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So yeah, that's, <laughs> that's when they yeah they show up and they just start uh, start beheading bees. And all it takes is a very few Asian giant hornets, like only like five or ten of them, to show up and slaughter slaughter an entire colony of 60,000 bees. And so how attached are you to be like, I mean, I'm su assuming you take care of them. So this is really sad, obviously, right? Oh, yeah, know. totally. Totally. Have yeah. you ever had a bee? How many bees have you owned in your life? Oh, millions. Millions. Have you ever had one that was really special that you'd like to tell us about? Well, we, we sometimes we, uh, we have <laughs> queens. We, uh, we, we name the queens. We don't name the uh, just the regular workers. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, give me give me some queen names that you've got. I've got a few good queen names. <laughs> My queen name would be Estee D, right? Oh, you're talking about as a as, yeah. as a, as a uh, drag queen. Yeah, yeah the drag okay. queen bees. Yeah, oh, yeah. Drag queen bees. Is there any drag queen bees? Yeah, the queen bees. <laughs> okay. But like, like, so what's some of your queen names that you've had? Well, our our favorite one, the one that we're using uh, for grafting this year, which is uh, producing more queens. Uh, her name is uh, Queen Elizabeth. Ah. ah, that's a bit of. <laughs> so a, see a, what you did there. That's a, that's a bit of fun. That's a bit of fun. <laughs> Uh, and and so do we have to do humans? Hey, wait a minute! You've been taking care of bees for fucking thirty years, and that's the first time you came up with that name. <laughs> <laughs> you went through like Queen Elizabeth has been around forever, and you looked at all the queen bees, and we'll go. We'll call that one Sarah. I can't, <laughs> I can't think of a pun for that one. <laughs> um, do we have to worry about murder hornets, humans? Uh, yes. Well, so so the the big threat. Uh, for the United States right now, and actually for all of North America, is uh, is if this Asian giant hornet gets out. Um, so we know that uh, there are uh, at least uh, a couple colonies here in the Pacific Northwest that uh, that that are here. And so the the trick is going to be to find them before they throw off more queens and they spread. If it spreads, then we're going to have uh, colony loss. We're going to have bee loss throughout the entire of North America. So the uh, the Department of Agriculture is taking it very seriously, and they're sending uh, trappers up here. Uh, and, and everyone's trying real hard to, uh, to eradicate the, uh, the Asian giant hornet. Uh, they don't target people. I mean, they will sting people if you happen to come too close to one of their nests. They're, uh, they're ground dwelling. So if you're walking in the woods and you happen to come too close to one of their nests and they attack you, you're going to find yourself in, in big trouble. Will now, they decapitate us? Now, <laughs> now, was I right in saying that if the bees die, we die? That's what I've heard. Mm -hmm. Like the bees are very important for human life. Yeah. So, so supposedly, uh, Albert Einstein said, uh, Humans will die four years after uh, the bees die. Um, that's, that's probably not true, but because uh, we could sustain ourselves on things like corn and, and certain things that don't have to be pollinated. But uh, it's going to be a very limited diet, and a lot of the things that keep us healthy, uh, we rely for bees. I mean, like berries, we need bees, nuts, uh, lots of vegetables and things. I mean, we're, we're going to lose a lot. And actually, even uh, meat and, and livestock, uh, bees pollinate uh, clover, they pollinate alfalfa which uh, the livestock eat. So uh, mm. bees are, are super duper important for our society. But what you're saying is we'll still have corn. <laughs> <laughs> Everything will be fine. Everything will be corn. -based. The American diet will not change. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So uh, there's a couple little facts here I want to just uh, go through, and then we're going to get to our dinner party fact th th at the end here. But Wouldn't Albert Einstein be an annoying cunt to have at a party? Like you'd just be hanging out, and I believe well, that actually. four years later, after the bees, uh, <laughs> we're going to die. Why does he talk like and that? Because he's like he's smart, <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then he, he's German, wasn't he? And he goes, and then like someone would come in, and he'd go, they go, "What's your name?" And he go, they go, "Hi, my name's Adam." And he goes, "Atom, I have something to tell." No, Adam, ah, the Atom. And then he'd waffle on for fucking ever. What a pain in the ass that guy was. <laughs> <laughs> have, have you seen the picture of me sticking my tongue out? <laughs> Quite humorous. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Einstein. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, these are uh, B facts that I got from the internet. They may or may not be right, so if they're wrong, you can correct me. But I'm gonna All ask right, you. I'll, a I'll, I'll correct that. Honey, okay. How many how many um, flowers must honeybees gather nectar from to make one pound of honey? Oh, one pound. Well, they only make a quarter of a teaspoon um, in their whole lifetime. A twelfth of a teaspoon. Twelfth of a teaspoon. That's yeah. that is a quarter. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. No, uh, it is. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> not even close. Yeah. Mm, <laughs> it's a twelfth. I, yeah. It's not a quarter. <laughs> I think you'll find if a teaspoon smaller. is forty-eight, and they've getting twelve three of it. Three would be a that quarter. That would be a quarter. A quarter of what? I don't know. I'm making it. <laughs> anyway, so so uh, um, okay. So so okay. So how much how much butter? One pound make? of honey. How many flowers do they have to get ne- gather nectar from? Uh, uh, One pound. I, uh, a thousand. It says two million flowers. I don't know if you know this off the top of your head, but yeah, that's two million. Well, that's ridiculous. This is what I've always thought about the world, <laughs> right? We're destroying it fine, right? We need trees to get oxygen and all that type of stuff. We need flowers to get the honey to feed the livestock with the alfalfa and, <laughs> and thus forth so we can have meat, right? Now, now we need two million flowers pollinated so as to get a little a jar of fucking honey, right? Mm-hmm. This is what I don't get. World's designed badly. It's fucking designed badly. When I was a kid, they kept on going, oh, we need more trees. We're out of trees. Everywhere I go, everywhere I go, there's fucking trees everywhere. You can't fucking, you can't, there's parts of this world you can't walk around. Too many fucking trees. It's a bad design. Each city needs, should have like four trees and we should build around that and that should be all the oxygen. Mm. Too many trees. Too many trees, yeah. Too much water on the earth and not enough land for all the people. <laughs> right? Should write a letter to management. You should, you should, you should opposite. It should be the amount of land, water should be the amount of land and then the amount of land should be the amount of water. Yeah, yeah. Right? That would be better. We could fit more people in. Less trees, they're getting in the way. When I was a, <laughs> when I was a kid, when I was a kid, they used to go, every day the Amazon loses a football field's worth of trees. Or every minute or every hour, they used to get this statistic. I'm calling bullshit because the Amazon's still there. <laughs> well, they, they must be out of it by now. No, it's that, was, that was 40 years ago they were telling me that. And every year, every day we're losing a football field. I know it's big. That's huge. Can't be that fucking big. <laughs> <laughs> every fucking day. Are you sure not a conspiracy theorist? You yeah. have all the makings. Of I just that. think like the trees have come back. Uh, okay. I feel like we've lost a bit of it. Next sure. question. <laughs> Next honey question. How long... Does honey stay good? Like how long will it last? Oh, I think honey lasts a very long time. I how think long? I think it's a thing that you don't even have to refrigerate real honey. Mm-hmm. Um, a couple of years. All right, uh, Ted. I think you told me it never goes bad. Correct? Is that correct? Correct. It'll it'll, it'll never spoil. So so long as it's like uh, sealed and, and not exposed to oxygen and and, uh, and moisture in the air, it lasts. It's good forever. Because then they find some in like a tomb in Egypt, and then somebody like melted it and ate it or something is that right i I read that absolutely yep yeah Yeah. out of the out of the tomb of king tut that's right in in any of the a lot of the egyptian uh tombs had the had honey that's still totally edible king tut honey man it is surprising to me that people like go explore things and they're like oh let me just taste this (laughs) (laughs) it's it's been in a pyramid for how many thousands or whatever years and it's like "Mm, let's melt this and see what this tastes like put it on a taco (laughs) yeah i never saw that that in indiana jones yeah (laughs) indiana jones and the adventure of the honey okay a couple more questions here um how how so they make the buzz sound by their wings we determine that how fast how many times per minute do their wings beat how many times a minute do their wings beat? Yeah. <laughs> you just counted. I'm just counting it, ready? <laughs> I'll be doing this for a minute. You're going to do a minute? Okay, what I'll you do is... You do 10 seconds I'll do 10 six. seconds of time by six. Okay. <laughs> 10,000. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's pretty close. Eleven thousand four hundred. Wow. <laughs> is that okay. is, is that the right number? Ted, I'm again pulling this off the internet. So, but eleven thousand four hundred is that? That's pretty good. You're yes. a good counter. I'm good with me maths. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, and then here your last one. So, um, when uh, once a bee finds a good source of nectar, how does it tell the other bees about it? They don't. Keeps it to itself. <laughs> 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 You're right. <laughs> Very selfish. That's why they only make one fluffy <laughs> Um They walk in and go, oh, gosh. 
This and then and then they go back to the hive like this. Are you finding your neck there today? No, no. no I'll, uh, I'll have to go out and look for it for about six hours tomorrow. <laughs> and, uh, and I'll be doing that by myself. I won't need anyone. I, I'm on to a few good leads. <laughs> Um, this we didn't talk about, it, but this and here it says honey bees communicate with one another by dancing. And when they tell someone, when they want to tell their bees about the nectar, it's a waggle dance. Is that right, Ted? Like, the fuck yeah, that's right. It's, it's like a little shake, and uh, and they they tell the bees like what direction to go and how far to go. Yeah, and they communicate all that in a pitch black uh, pitch black hive. You put your stinger in, you put your stinger out, you put your stinger in, and you waggle it about. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, Ted. Thank you uh, for all the information. But before we uh, we leave with you, we want to have what we call a dinner party fact, and this is something that we can give our listeners at home uh, or in their car, wherever they're, uh, so that they can uh, pretend just, to know that they know a lot about bees. So something obscure or just just a quick thing. Please write to us if this is the case. Is anyone fucking to this at the moment? <laughs> <laughs> Is anyone at home you better uh, be. fucking in like your yeah, mid stroke and then I did the hokey pokey waggle thing and you stopped for a little bit to have a little chuckle <laughs> and, then, and then you went back to it. Someone must have sex to podcast. So, yeah. um, so uh, just a fact, uh, any fact that you have about bees that you think people won't know about that is interesting that they can, you know, use at a bar or dinner party or something like that just to impress other people. Uh, I would say uh, bees can be used to... Uh, detect explosives and uh, bodies and uh, narcotics. So maybe that's why all the dead bees are in your pool too. <laughs> uh, I think we have a new TV show. Bee cops. What does a, what does a homeless woman use for a vibrator? You heard that joke? No. A whole lot of bees in a Coke bottle. <laughs> oh wow! Jesus Christ! That's a rough one. Um, they can detect. They can use them as like like to detect drugs and explosives. Like how do you wrangle a bee to do that? Like how does that? Uh, does, does yeah. the, are we, how, how long does a bee live? We never answered that oh, yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. How long does a bee live? Uh, in, in the summertime, around six weeks. Uh, in the wintertime, it can be uh, up to six months. Right, summer. right. So in summertime, there's a bee, a five-week-old bee looking for a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> going, going, oh, I'm too old for this shit. Where's the coke at? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, if you train bees in the last six weeks, I mean, what, what's the benefit of training a bee? Yeah, yeah, that's why that's why it hasn't been, uh, you know, we're not using it yet, I guess, because, uh, yeah, I mean, you train a dog and you have them for many years. A bee is only back good for a matter of weeks. Yeah. Plus, you can't. Uh, so, so what they were doing is they were putting bees in like a straw, and they would uh, expose them to a smell, and then uh, feed them afterwards with sugar water. So, um, the thing is, uh, they would bring them. They, you could bring them around in the straw, and if they would smell it in the air, they would uh, stick out their proboscis, which is uh, like a tongue. Mm. And uh, so because they were ready to uh, ready to take the sugar water. Yeah. And um, and so you can train the bees to do that. But I mean, like you said, it's a very limited amount of time for the bees life. So you train them and you only get a, a few weeks out of them. Yeah, I just looked it up. It's called Hymenoptera training. So I guess the bees Hymenoptera. And then it, they called sniffer bees or sniffer wasps. Fucking narcs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> they, yeah, man. What yeah, do you, so, yeah, so what do you bring the bees yeah, over so it, it was for, one man? Of, <laughs> yeah, no, I was gonna say yeah. So, so it was one of my uh, professors there at the University of Montana, uh, uh, Dr. Jerry Bromancheck, that uh, was one of the pioneers in that. But he did it. He was doing it by uh, by releasing the bees. Yeah. Like it, so, he would train them in the hive what to smell for, and then he would release them, and they would fly around outside. And so that uh, they found that they could uh, the bees would would uh, hover around areas where. Uh, so if they were trying to teach them to find a, a body. They would hover around the area like where the body was buried in the ground. And ah, so, uh, whoa. yeah, or they also found uh, like meth houses and stuff like that. Oh, cool. That's a, that's so, a, you just the follow the, follow the bees to fun. <laughs> yeah, you'd also bring them to a party. What do you got? Bees? Nothing. I'm just hey, going to set them what? in your bedroom, see where the weed is. <laughs> do, you, do you still use that like metal thing with the handle where you go poof, 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 smoke. poof, poof? This, is it just smoke? I, uh, I don't know, Ted. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just smoke. You can use uh, use any type of a straw or, or, or a burlap. You can put anything in there. Yeah, but the smoke hides the pheromone. So you know how we were talking about that banana smell or the uh, emergency pheromone? Well, you you puff that smoke around, and then they don't uh, they don't realize that there's a, a problem that calms everyone down, and they don't smell the alarm pheromone. Hmm. Ah, so uh, what's the deal with uh, carpenter bees? 
Yeah, so that's one of the, the type of, of native bees. They don't make uh, they don't make honey, so no one really you know raises those. What's like, the deal bees. with them? <laughs> What's the deal with carpenter bees? They don't make honey. They don't build tables. What are they? <laughs> um, well, there you go. There's drug sniffing bees. That's your dinner party fact. Um, Ted, thank you very much for being on. I don't know about that podcast. Um, Ted, do you do you ship your honey, or can you only purchase it when you're at your apiary? Uh yeah we 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 generally just uh just sell it locally here okay hmm. Kelly's trying to get some free honey yeah I don't no know. I don't want I, I, I would buy it <laughs> yeah. but he said it comes in a bear uh, jar I, 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 have an, I have an idea for you uh, ship station <laughs> <laughs> if you wanna if you wanna ship your honey <laughs> at, a, at, at, a, the at a very low price <laughs> and get competitive rates ship station dot com make ship happen. <laughs> <laughs> One of our sponsors, Ted. So, um... Also, also, do you have hairy balls there, Ted? <laughs> <laughs> Manscape. <laughs> Manscape. And I know what you're thinking, but I don't get erections. What's the point? Just leave it hairy. I've got blue chew. <laughs> I've got to take a blue chew, manscape, and then ship it to somewhere. Because the ad reads are done for today. Yeah. Hopefully those match up with this episode. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, cryo-freeze. <laughs> totally if, wrong. Stop. If, if you hurt yourself. Yeah. Okay. Was that right? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah it, it is right. Yeah. All right, all right. That's the first time I um, said it right. So what we're going to do, Ted, you can stick around for this if you want. We have one more segment called. But if you want to listen to this podcast later, Raycon earbuds. I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I could not suggest a better earbud. Um, but thank you for being here. Is there anything? A modium. I mean, a lot, a, lot, a lot of times we have. Fantastic a lot, stuff. A lot of times we have uh, people that have written Cousins a Cousins Maine Lobster. <laughs> <laughs> they don't pay me any money. I just wonderful product. <laughs> A lot of times people have something they want to promote, but I mean, I don't know if you, you you want to promote anything or if you want to just tell people anything about bees or you want to say goodbye in a certain way. But that's yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I really don't have anything uh, anything to promote, but okay. uh, but 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 I mean, I I I am appreciative of you guys uh, putting the story out on the bees because uh, bees are detrimental to our uh, to our survival and to our way of life, and so. Uh, a lot of people don't pay attention to them or don't notice them, but if they're not here anymore, we would definitely notice them. Don't you mean they're vital to our survival? You said detrimental. Oh, oh yeah, I'm sorry. My yeah, bad. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it would be detrimental to our survival if anything happened to yeah. them. For a second yeah, yeah. there, I was I, like, wait a second. I we thought, should kill the bees. I, I thought Ted was just going to like just lose it. Like, I've been keeping this secret for years. <laughs> <laughs> they're useless. <laughs> the honey is just syrup that we make out of a jar. It's mostly made of corn. Um, and to answer the question, I think everybody's been wondering: Is that a tiny flag in a giant room, or is it a regular, <laughs> regular size flag? Yeah, that's actually a, just a tiny flag. My my Perfect. daughter stuck that up there. Is you your, is she your, must be tall. Is your daughter six foot, <laughs> sixteen foot tall? <laughs> How did she do that? There, there's a couch underneath it. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> just the angle. Does your dad ever get into you like like because he he's been beekeeping for so long? When you started beekeeping, did he ever walk around and tut like oh, that's not how you fucking beekeep? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 All, all the time. You call that big keeping? <laughs> Back in my day. Uh, uh, yeah. No, no, he he still does that. Oh yeah, yeah. Gosh. What did you call Elizabeth? <laughs> uh, fucking stupid B name. We used to call them one, two, and three. <laughs> uh, Ted, actually, stick around because we're going to get a picture with you and Jim you, uh, with him on the Zoom, but uh, with you on the Zoom. Um, but so our last segment is I do know about that, and this is the part where we ask Jim. Three questions about a subject he says he does know about to see if he, in fact, does know about it. Okay. And I know you're going to think this is a repeat, but we've never actually recorded this. Uh -huh, uh -huh, but we asked different uh -huh, questions this uh -huh, time. So today's, uh, today is pinball. Pinball? Yeah. We, we, there yeah. has to be a trick. So here's your three questions. Jim says he knows a lot about pinball. Yeah. What is the only Major League Baseball team to appear as a title to a pinball machine? Oh, uh, that'd be the Yankees. Here's a hint. I'm raising my eyebrows. No. Nah. It's not the Yankees. Um, uh, <laughs> Kelly and the Gangbangs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the Chicago Cubs. Yeah. Chicago Cubs. And it's called the Chicago Cubs Triple Play. Okay. Oh, wow. And that, that was like, you could just never win. <laughs> yeah. win the World Series. Yeah, so. no, but that, when the yeah. pinball machine came out, there's no way of winning. You'll get close the whole time and get <laughs> that, frustrated. That was the only game. way that the Chicago Cubs did win, yeah, is yeah. through the pinball. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, There was like, there was a bit of ivy at the back of the pinball machine where the ball just got stuck. <laughs> um, what pinball machine was featured in the TV series Happy Days? Oh, fuck, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, we I'm, already uh, asked you other questions. Yeah, uh... 
uh, what pinball machine? And Fonzie would have hit it and gone, yo, hey. I was talking to a friend about this. Fonzie's the least cool person in, in, in TV history. How they sold that man as cool yeah. is beyond me. He lived in a studio apartment in a, above a residential home in Milwaukee. <laughs> he was about 30 years old. He hung out with teenagers and tried to bang, you know, 15 year olds and his office was a toilet. <laughs> and we were like, oh, I would love to be that man. <laughs> he had a cool catchphrase. He hanged out in a milk bar. Could you imagine him going he's 30 with a leather jacket hanging out in a milk bar, going up to the jukebox and going, and like someone's like, oh, this thing won't work. Hey, I'll make it work. Hey, <laughs> and you'd go, uh, kids, just step step away. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't don't hang out with that guy. He's fucking nuts. Oh, I'm gonna ride my motorcycle around the car park and jump over things. Way. <laughs> um. So the answer is, it was a the name of the pinball machine. Um. Okay. I, I'm trying to think of the era. It would have been way. It would have been one of the ones with the, the card game ones. So I'm gonna say it, it would be like blackjack or something like that. Nip it. Nip it. What Never the hell is nip it? it? Never heard of it. Never is. heard of it. Um, and then this last one is a variation. Maybe it used to be in a bar called The Bud. Mm. Ooh. Nip it in the bud, you Let's see. Yep. yep. Uh, nip it. I don't know. It says <laughs> nip it was, I don't know. I yeah, it's from the 1950s. It was probably a lynching theme <laughs> type of thing. I'm sure nip it wasn't the most wholesome. Okay. And the last question is, this is a variation on one. So what are the three highest, not just the highest production games in modern pinball history? Modern. Okay. So the number one is the Adams family. Correct. Yep. Number two, uh, I'm going to go Mars attacks. No. Uh, the number movies. two and three are almost the same thing. Um, Adam's family. Number not not as not, Adam's family is it, but number two and three are almost the exact same names except for one word. They are the exact same names except for one word. Twilight one. Zone. No. Medieval Madness. No. <clears throat> it's oh, eight God. ball and eight ball deluxe. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't even know what that is. Yeah. Why would there be two eight balls? I don't know. Because one's deluxe. Don't don't one's like number two. <laughs> I was I was looking at people because I'm getting a new pinball machine at the moment. I was looking at this store and one of them had Lethal Weapon three. Yeah. Why don't you just make a lethal weapon machine yeah. and lethal weapon three? I think that uh, you knew a lot about pinball. We just had to throw some. Yeah, but that, that's so. that's you'd have to. But yeah, you didn't know. What the, to, you know, you, you didn't know what the first one with the flippers was. I know you know that. Yeah, yeah, I know all that. What is it? it the first one with the flippers yeah. was um, yeah. was uh, Humpty Dumpty. That's correct. Okay, we'll give. And it the flippers to you. were facing the opposite. We'll direction. give you two out of three. All right, that's the show for today. I don't know about that podcast. Please follow um, us on Instagram at i the. K A T podcast. <laughs> Come and see me in Vegas if yeah. I'm going to do a show because the ticket. Look, I, these shows originally are almost we were almost sold out. Yeah, and then they got cancelled and the shows all got refunded and now the ticket sales are. I'm not going to lie to you, they're yeah, moving slowly. Yeah, because <laughs> because of the COVID. Yeah. Because people think, and I don't know, I don't know how many people they're going to allow into the theater. There mm -hmm. might be a reduced number. I don't know what it is, but I plan on being there and telling jokes to somebody. Whether you may be that lady at the blackjack table. Just be us backstage. Well, so go to Jim's website, jimjeffries.com, and for all that information. And for the podcast, you can subscribe to us on uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Also, YouTube. Look for us on YouTube. Please watch us there. And, and the podcast is growing. I yeah, feel like bees will, bees will be a huge hit. Yeah, I think I feel so. Like I love this episode. It'll be a rating success. People yeah. will be like, ah, oh, finally. Yeah. Finally, someone's well, talking about we it. We did cheese, too. So cheese was a success. Yeah. So we're People doing love cheese. Next week is cheese. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, we're only laugh, doing yeah. only doing rhyming podcasts yeah, next, now on. Next week is sandals. <laughs> <laughs> With our expert, Joe. <laughs> All right. Take All right. us out. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to the podcast. Uh, if you're at a party, someone says something that you don't know the answer to. This is how you win the fight. You go, well, I don't know about that. And you walk away. Good night, Australia. All right.